Oh, hello. Hey, it's Abe from AI Synthesis. I want to make a little video. Um, oh, I'm squatting in a weird way. Um, showing you how to calibrate uh, the AI-011 VCO, or really any Curtis VCO, probably. Um, really any oscillator, actually. So, good video. Uh, I have to use the part of my studio where I make music in to do it, so it's going to be a little... It's not going to be like, quite as pro as I want it to be, but it will show you like how to calibrate a VCO, why I do it the way I do it, and uh, then I'll have a little bit on um, uh, the uh, on uh, analog sign shaping. We'll go through that, and yeah, hopefully we good. Bye. So the way I do my calibration is you need a MIDI to CV converter or a keyboard that has CV out, which I don't have, so I'm just using the Hermod as a uh, MIDI to CV converter. You need a tuner. I like this highly accurate um, data. Um, you need an oscillator that you've built. Um, just volt per octave in, and then I like the triangle out. It's very um, pure wave. It's easy for tuners to catch its rising and falling. Um, and then I like to use a linear power supply while doing the calibration. Um, there are certain digital cases, certain digital power supplies in the way that they are implemented in cases can add funny stuff, make it harder um, to calibrate. So I like to have a completely separate linear power supply. In this case, it's just a mutable instruments module tester. All it's doing is applying 12 volt power. It's doing nothing else. So then the first step is you get it uh, as close as you can to your bottom octave. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. Using fine tune. Great. Ooh. That's pretty good. So then I'm going to take note of that frequency here. I'm going to say 32.7. And then I'm going to go up an octave on the MIDI keyboard. C2. Now, that's pretty damn good, actually. Uh, if that was off, it'll probably be off when I go to C3. Um, but I'm just going to take a note of that frequency here. We'll do 65.4. Cool handwriting, bro. Um, go up to C3. And, wow. Okay. Well, it's a very good oscillator, it turns out. <laughs> there we go. I'm barely, barely fucking off. I probably actually won't even be able to get that calibrated because it's so close. Um, but if it was not close, I'll make it not close. Okay. So what I just did was I futzed with the volt per octave trimmer to get it. It's got to be less good than it was, because that was pretty damn good. So when you do that, the whole pitch gets thrown off, which it's supposed to, so that's fine. So then I'm going to C1. Can I focus you? A little bit. Okay. So now I have to retune it on the oscillator. And, oh, so when you first hit the notes, um, it's really good to be able to have a tuner that tells you um, what number of note it is, um, and if not, you can go online, there's like frequency to uh, notes. Um, so like when you're pressing C3 on your keyboard, you want this to be C3, C2, C1, etc. Um, otherwise, things get weird. Um, so, okay, so now I've tuned it to C1, 32.69, that's close enough to 32.7, which is where I want. I'll try and get it a little bit better. There we go, 32.7, perfect. So now I go to C2. Yes, it's a little flat, barely fucking flat. So, 65, oh my God, I need a flat surface, this is ridiculous. 65.3, cool. So now, I don't really know how much to turn the trimmer. So you just kind of have to guess. So in this case, I'm going to 
turn it, and I'm going to keep track of the turns. I'm going to write it down in which direction. So I'm going to turn it uh, like a quarter turn clockwise. So I'm going to write that down here. Quarter turn clockwise. And then what I'm going to do, that's going to, every time you turn the, the volt proctor trimmer, it fucks up the tuning. So I'm going to have to go back down an octave, tune to C1, and then hit C2, and then see if that made it better or worse, and by how much, and if I'm happy with it, which is confusing. So let's start with that. I'm going to put the camera down so I can turn the fucking trimmer. Okay, I just turned the trimmer. So now I go back to C1, and now it's a little sharp. So that's fine. I'm going to make it back to flat. And the first time you calibrate the oscillator when you turn it on, it's going to be way like more radical than this. You'll see the changes. 32.7, great. So then I go up to C2. Okay, I need to do it a little more. So I'm going to turn the trimmer a little more. I'm going to Note that down, one quarter clockwise, see what happens. Okay, so I just turn the trimmer, go back to C1, it's sharp, that's what I want. Uh, so I'll make it in tune again, oops, oops, went and nudged the coarse tune pot with my other finger, because I'm not looking at it, I'm looking at the scope. Okay, good. Now I go C2. Pretty good. I think it needs one quarter more turn. But the point is it's getting better. I can see that it's getting better, so I know I'm on the right track. So I can give it one more turn and see if I can get it perfect. Go back to C1. Get it basically perfect. C2, boom! Cool. Now I'm going to test on C3. It's pretty fucking good. So typically the more octaves you go apart, um, the, the worse good it will be. C4, I'm going to call that acceptable. I'm probably going to do another turn before I do the video, but for this case. So, when you have it perfect, or as good as you want it, honestly, if they could get this in the 70s and 80s, they would be amazed. Um, but uh, if you, once you're happy with this, um, then you uh, you tune the higher frequencies, uh, C5, uh, C6, C7, but you want to stop uh, at uh, C4, assuming you're doing Cs. It's basically 500 hertz. You, you don't want to tune higher than 500 hertz with the volt per octave because uh, that is what this other trimmer is for here, this high frequency trimmer. Um, it's got an offset, which is really handy. Because uh, otherwise it'd be a nightmare to try and get C6 and C2 to be off right. So at that point you go counterclockwise on the high frequency trimmer. Beautiful. So now let's talk about the sign shaper. Okay, sign shaper. That is the sign I have. Um, so I've already raised the gain. Um, and I've already done a little bit of the trimming. But... I'll give, I'm going to do this a little bit um, more to show you kind of like how it works and what you should be looking for. So the sign is controlled um, on the back here. You've got uh, this trimmer, ah, this trimmer for sign shape, and the other one for the sign amplitude. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll just have it pointed at the oscilloscope while I manipulate those, but um, you'll kind of be able to uh, see what I'm doing there. Okay, I had to turn the lights off to get um, this to display right. So what you see right now are two waveforms. This green waveform is, oh, I didn't realize I color-coded it. That's cool. The green one is uh, the saw, uh, sine wave output. So that's what the current sine wave is. And then uh, this orangey one is um, the triangle output. So it's a triangle core oscillator. And what's happening is basically uh, the op amp is buffering and making a, a copy of the triangle wave and then putting that through um, some analog sign shaper circuitry. That's what the 
uh, J201 transistors, therefore, it's part of that. Um, and then the output, depending on how you set the gain and the sine shape, um, is your sine-ish wave. It's really hard to get a, a true sine wave um, in analog uh, period, um, especially when you're coming from another uh, waveform. So I'll just show you what the gain, what the controls do. Uh, the first one that you'll use when uh, you, you're, you know, powering on and calibrating is the sine amplitude. Um, you want it to be a five volt point to point waveform. Right now it's bigger than that triangle waveform. So I'm gonna gather it down. When you first power it on, it's probably gonna be really, really low. So don't freak out, just, just turn it up. So now you can see it's much lower. Get it to match that triangle. A little more. There we go. And then, uh, I don't know if this one, I just changed the, uh, the pitch. I put it down. Um, that's actually going to help us though. So that's good. So this is telling me that every um, bar, like every two bars is two volts. So it's like two and a half and two and a half. So five volt peak to peak. So that's great. Uh, so but, uh, once you have the amplitude correct, now we want to mess with the sign shape. So you can see this is like, it's a little, still pretty triangly. So you just mess with the trimmer. This will change the shape. That's very triangly. Probably want to go the other way. So I can see it's a little more signy. You give it a little more amplitude too now that I can kind of see the difference there. That's pretty good. If you go too far, you start getting this square wave. So it's kind of like one of those things. I'll keep messing with that a little bit. There you go. Yeah, it can, it can help going down in frequency, giving you a little more detail, or setting your oscilloscope differently, but a little more detail. I'm getting pretty happy with that. So I put up here, yeah, it looks really nice. It looks shiny at high frequencies. Mess with it a little bit more. There we go. I'm liking that, and I think, especially if I turn that off, I bet it looks a little better. Boop. Cool. I'm going to call that a calibrated sine wave. Awesome. So now I can make the demo video, which you will have seen before seeing this one, probably. Anyway, unlighted face. Oh. Thanks for watching.